Hello everyone. Welcome to this online lecture of modern physics. We have been discussing the fourth chapter atomic models and this is the story so far. This chapter atomic models can be divided into two uh, major parts. The first one is atomic models in which we consider different atomic models and we consider some of the experiments which led to development of atomic physics. The second part of this chapter is lasers. This term laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So this is how the term laser is coined and regarding the lasers we discussed three processes in previous lecture. We discussed stimulated absorption which means if we have a system with two energy levels E1 and E2 then a photon of frequency nu which is equal to E2 minus E1 by H can excite a system which is in lower energy state E1 and in the process this photon of frequency nu is absorbed causing the system to excite into the higher energy level. This, is, this process is called as stimulated absorption. The next process that we discussed is spontaneous emission in which suppose we have a system which has these two energy levels E2 and E1 and if we have the system in excited state E2 then the tendency of this system is to de-excite to energy state E1 and when it de-excites to energy state E1 it emits a photon in the, in the process and the frequency of the photon is again E2 minus E1 by H. So these are the two processes of stimulated absorption and spontaneous emission. The most important process for lasers is the third process which is stimulated emission in which we have a system in state E2 and there is also a photon with frequency nu given by this relation E2 minus E1 divided by H. And if this photon now makes the system to de excites to energy state E1, what happens is the photon which is the cause of the de excitation stays there. It is acting as a catalyst in this process. And the system when de excite it emits a photon with the same frequency. Now the important point in stimulated emission is that these two photons, the photon which caused the de excitation which stimulated the emission and the photon which is emitted due to the process of de excitation these two photons are identical. They are monochromatic of course because they have the same frequency but at the same time they are also coherent and this gives rise to the laser beam when there are so many photons emitted in the process of stimulated emission and that is the reason why we have this term light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So these are the three processes that we discussed in the previous lecture. In this lecture now we want to discuss some other concepts related with lasers. We will discuss population inversion, we will discuss uh, optical pumping and metastable state and then we will see schematics for three level and four level pumping schemes of lasers. Let's begin by considering the concept of population inversion. For that we will first discuss this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution for two level systems. This is the system where there are these two levels present E1 and E2. I am reiterating this. When we consider two level systems it doesn't necessarily mean that there are only these two energy levels in the system but what it means is that we are considering these two energy levels. Now suppose that we have n number of systems, n number of identical systems at temperature T. So this n is total number of systems. total number of two level systems or two energy level systems and T is the temperature. Suppose N1 is number of systems 
in state E1 and N2 is number of systems in state E2. Then this ratio N2 by N1 is given by Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. This ratio is equal to e to the power minus e2 minus e1 divided by kb into t. This kb here is Boltzmann constant. which is equal to 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per Kelvin. So this ratio N2 by N1 is given by this relation, which is according to Maxwell's Boltzmann distribution. Now I am leaving it for you to do this, to do these calculations. Consider that the difference E2 minus E1 is equal to 10 electron volt. Why we are considering this particular energy 10 electron volt is because uh, we have seen that the ground state energy of hydrogen atom is 13.6 electron volt. So it is reasonable to assume that the energy levels in atoms are of this order 10 electron volts and that is why we are considering this difference E2 minus E1 as 10 electron volts. So consider that E2 minus E1 is 10 electron volts and all these systems suppose are at room temperature at ambient temperature which we can consider to be 300 Kelvin. So plug all these values here and try to figure out this ratio N2 by N1. What you will find is this ratio N2 by N1 is very small as compared to 1. So what it means is when it comes to room temperature, these two level energy systems that we have, they tend to be in the ground state. So most of the systems will be in ground state at room temperature only a couple of them you will find in the excited state and most of the, the systems are in ground state. Therefore, the message that we receive is this. At room temperature, lower energy state are populated and there will be very less number of systems which are in excited state. This is a problem when it comes to making lasers possible. Why? Because in lasers what we want is we want stimulated emission. Why? Because in lasers, we want most of the emissions through process of stimulated emission and that will be possible only when we have higher number of systems in energy state E2. So we have to achieve this state where the number of systems in the excited state is more than number of systems in ground state. And this is the concept of population inversion. So what we have is this natural tendency of two level systems at room temperature most of the systems will tend to be in the ground state but for lasers we want stimulated emission to occur and for stimulated emission to occur what we want is most of the systems should be in excited states so from this state where most of the systems are in ground state we have to reach a state where number of systems in excited state is more than number of systems in ground state. So what is population inversion? Population inversion is this process of inverting the population of changing the states of the system so that most of the systems are now in excited state rather than the ground state which is not natural. Their natural tendency is to be in this state in a state where number of systems in ground state are more than number of systems in excited state. From this natural tendency, we have to somehow invert the population. We have to change the state so that most of the systems are now in excited states rather than in ground state. 
so how do we do it of course we have we are exciting the states to higher energy level that means we have to pump energy we have to give energy we have to provide energy continuously so the system can be excited to achieve the population inversion now whenever light is used to achieve population inversion then it is called as optical pumping the term is pretty much self explanatory so what we have is we have these two energy level systems and what we do is we use light or electromagnetic radiations to invert the population so that the number of systems are more in excited state than the ground state and therefore for this to happen what should be the frequency of radiations it should be e2 minus e1 divided by h so in this way if we use photons or electromagnetic radiations of this frequency to achieve population inversion then that process is called as optical pumping however even with optical pumping it is not possible to achieve population inversion in two level system the reason is because of the symmetry of these processes stimulated absorption and stimulated emission they are symmetrical and by symmetrical i mean that the probability of excitation it's same as probability of de excitation given that the same number of photons are uh, in the vicinity of the system and therefore what will happen is if suppose we want to if we try to achieve population inversion what will happen is if we somehow manage to get more number of systems in higher energy state since the probability of excitation it's same as probability of de excitation and since we have more number of systems in excited state more number of systems will de excite rather than exciting due to the symmetry of the process and in this way even when if we manage to achieve the population inversion the systems will quickly regain their natural state in which most of the systems are in state e1 and therefore it is not possible to achieve the population inversion continuously in two energy state so let's quickly review of what we have discussed so far in this lecture we have said that laser is obtained or laser light is obtained we have when we have uh, stimulated emissions to obtain stimulated emission what we need is population inversion where most of the systems are in excited state rather than in ground state which is not natural because natural tendency is to be in the lower energy state so we have to achieve population inversion to have laser light to achieve population inversion we can use the concept of optical pumping because we want to have most of the systems in higher energy state we have to continuously provide energy to the system which can be done by photons of this particular frequency and when light is used for achieving population inversion it is called as optical pumping now even with optical pumping since the probability of stimulated absorption and stimulated emission it's same we cannot achieve population inversion in two level systems and therefore to achieve population inversion we must have at least three energy levels to the system we will uh, again come to this concept when we discuss three level and four level pumping schemes for now let's consider another important concept for lasers for making lasers possible which is this concept of metastable state so what is metastable state suppose i have this to these two energy levels this is ground state energy level and this is uh, no normal energy level whereas in other case i have ground state and metastable state metastable state is different than normal state is as follows suppose first let's consider the transition rates we have seen the concept of transition rate rates in previous lecture what it means it is probability per unit time of transition to occur so if we have a system in excited state then 
this transition rate tells us what is the probability per unit time of this de excitation to occur. So, for normal state, this transition rate is high, whereas for metastable state, this rate is very low. And therefore, what happens is if somehow you manage to get a system to metastable state, since the transition rate is very less since the probability per unit time of this de excitation is very less the system naturally will stay there for longer time lifetime of the system in the metastable state is quite high as compared to normal state for normal states roughly the lifetime is of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 seconds whereas for metastable state this is 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. So, you can see that lifetime of metastable state is roughly of the order of 10 to the power 5 times more than lifetime of a normal state and therefore you can say that these transitions for normal state to ground state are fast transitions whereas transitions from metastable state to ground state are slow transitions and what we need are these slow transitions so that we can achieve population inversion. Let's now discuss the three level pumping scheme for lasers. So as the name suggests there are three energy levels involved E1, E2 and E3. In these three energy levels this transition from E3 to E1 is slow transition. And therefore, this E3 is the metastable state. If you compare the transition rate from E1 to E2, let me write it like this. I am drawing the arrows in the port direction because probability of excitation, probability of stimulated absorption it's same as probability of stimulated emission if we compare the transition rates for these two states transition of e1 to e2 and transition of 2 to 3 then this transition rate is higher if we have systems which are in energy state e2 then it is more probable that these systems are de-excited to energy state E3 rather than E1. So if we have a situation like this, most of the systems then will de-excite to energy state E3 as compared to number of systems which are de-excited to uh, energy state E1. Now what is done in three level pumping schemes is, let me erase this. So what is done is, Optical pumping is used, light is used so that the systems are excited from energy state E1 to energy state E2. What should be the frequency of this light? Let me call that as nu prime, which is used for optical pumping. It is equal to E2 minus E1 divided by H. So, light of this frequency is used to excite the systems from E1 to E2. Now we just have said that transition rate of E2 to E3 is more than transition of E1 to E2 to E1 and therefore what will happen when you excite a system to E2 is most of them will de-excite to E3 rather than E1 and therefore in this way by using optical pumping and these particular transition rates, we will have most of the systems in the state E3, which turns out to be a metastable state. And since it is a metastable state, systems who are in state E3 will stay there for longer time because this transition is less probable. So this is a fast transition. This is even faster transition. And this is a slow transition and in this way we can achieve population inversion for the state E3. 
so most of the state are in state e3 for three level pumping scheme which turns out to be meta stable state moreover this transition from e2 to e3 which is in which the systems are de excited naturally the energy is released released but this transition is non radiative non radiative transition what it means to be non -radi radiative is the energy which is lost by the system when they de excite from energy state e2 to e3 is not emitted as light but it is converted to some other form it could be temperature or vibrational energies and in this way now most of the systems are in state e3 and this kind of population inversion is achieved for energy state e3 now once in a while when one of the system de excites from e3 to e1 though it is slow transition when this transition occurs this photon will increase the probability of de excitation and therefore when light is emitted for this transition of e3 to e1 we obtain the laser light so what is going to be the frequency of laser light that we get in this process of three level e3 minus e1 divided by h okay let's now consider four level pumping scheme there are now four energy levels involved in here e1 e2 e3 and e4 this transition e3 to e4 let's use t for that so transition rate of e1 to e2 is is less than transition rate of e2 to e3 and therefore if you have systems once you get systems into energy state e2 it is more probable that they will de excite to state e3 rather than e1 and the state e3 now is the metastable state so it should be immediately clear that population inversion is achieved for this state e3 now optical pumping is used to excite the systems from energy level e1 to e2 so what should be the frequency of photons which are used it is e2 minus e1 by h so photons of these frequency is used to achieve to excite the systems now since transition rate 2 to 3 is more than transition rate 2 to 1 most of the systems will accumulate in this energy state e3 now once one of the system de excites to energy level e4 it will increase the probability of de excitation and in this and in this way most of the photons are emitted in the process of stimulated emission when it comes to de excitation from state e3 to e4 and therefore we have laser light here and what is the frequency of laser now for this case it is e3 minus e4 divided by h so in this way metastable state is e3 and population is and population inversion is achieved in that state once the system de excite here this also is fast transition so this is fast transition this is even faster this is also fast transition this transition is slow this again is fast transition so once the systems are in energy state e4 they are quickly de excited to state e1 and since we are continuously using optical pumping the systems will again excited to state e2 and the process continues and we obtain a 
laser light. Now these transitions E2 to E3 and E4 to E1 these are non-radiative transitions so photons are not emitted in this process. So this is the four level pumping scheme. Let's quickly revise what we discussed. We discussed population inversion. What is population inversion? When we consider two state systems, the systems tend to be in ground state rather than in excited state. But we have to use optical pumping which is a process in which photons are continuously supplied to the system. So most of the systems are in excited state, higher state and that is called as population inversion. Then we discuss metastable states which have longer lifetime as compared to normal state and population inversion in case of lasers is achieved in this metastable state. And then we discuss three level and four level pumping schemes for lasers. Uh, we will stop here and this is the last lecture on this fourth chapter atomic models. From next chapter we will start discussing the first chapter now which is special theory of relativity. Thank you for watching.